Had two spread either side. We throw to the flat, and it's caught. Pass rush does get back there eventually, but he finds Jacoby Myers. Five. Mahomes, quick throw. Empty set. Throw up top to a wide open to try to get a first down, or how about touchdown late? As that does not go 10 yards, and Jacoby Myers scoops it up. And with that, unfortunately, it would be a loss in week one. Asana Watson having to roll out, avoid the pass rush. He gets by the diving defender. We look to throw, quick throw in. It ends up being a very one-sided affair, 38 to 20. As we're going full back dive into the end zone. Kirko throws a nearly picked off, but that will do it. And this Mary Lavania State's only challenge has started off pretty slow. We started, though, to pick things up in that final game last episode against the Browns. It was finally that complete game we scored throughout, and defensively, we shut them out three of the four quarters, picking up our first divisional win. Now, in between episodes, I did do a little bit of some roster searching across the league to see where we might be able to fill in some holes because we very much have some on this team. Now, offensively, my main concern was maybe trying to see if we had another receiver. Boyd didn't really do much outside the first game. Robbie Chosen, he's been very hit or miss. Sometimes he catches it, sometimes he drops it. Justin Watson has been solid. And unfortunately, KJ Hamler, a guy who we could try to develop, he's been injured for the last few weeks. So we'll get him back this episode. Outside of the receivers, it was the offensive line. And there were a couple options that were upgrades on the younger side, but they're all top 15 offensive linemen for their position. So the trades really weren't all too possible. So we'll see when we get to the next off season, but for right now, we are staying put defensively really the only option that i was thinking we needed to make a trade was for an off ball linebacker i am perfectly happy with dennis continuing to get some starting time he's a rookie he could develop but we have a 66 overall next to him who is 29 years old so not really going to see any development there and there really aren't any other options at least that i was able to find there were some other outside linebacker opportunities Maybe they'll come in at a future time. But for the most part, this team is about as good as it could possibly be. So similarly to the previous series, so previously to the Kentiana state-only challenge that we just finished, this is probably going to be a series based off of a lot of development. So with that, we're going to get stuck in and most likely finish off this season today. Unless the team massively turns things around, one and three to start. We have a pretty good game to get us going here against the Pittsburgh Steelers, another divisional team. They're all offense, not so much defense, and they've started 0 and 4. And with a long season to get through, we're going to be a little bit more picky choosy where we jump in. First possession here for us in the Steelers game. Open receiver was Watson. Pickett missed him. That has been a continual issue to open up this series. Pickett has made some good plays. He's had several bad plays. We handed off James Conner to follow. He'll pick up about two. Now, in a way, I'm thinking this offense might need to be ran. We already mentioned it. Kentiana, very similar the, similarly there, relying on the running backs, taking a little bit of pressure off the quarterback, though that was a good throw, unfortunately. Watson does not hold on to it. So it will be the field goal unit that had headed out here. Ryland, the kicker, fourth and eight at the 26, should be a gimme. And he'll hit it. But as we jump forward to later on here in the first quarter, now it's the Steelers starting to drive, and they're running back Kyron Williams. So apparently we're just going to be talking a lot about Kentiana, though, not getting the sack, thrown out of the back. All right, we will take that. Kyler Murray. His first incomplete pass, nearly a sack. Second and 10, they come out with a very heavy group here. They got three tight ends to the top, one receiver down the bottom. They look to throw. Murray dumping it off for Kyron Williams, who will pick up the first, shaken by two and getting them down, goal to go at the eight. We know very well here how good of a running back he could be. Gonna be a task for the defense today to slow him down. 
as they go to him here. That's a quick stop down the middle. It took a couple of defenders, but we do drag him down. Will end up being about a loss of two as they change it up. Second and goal, they spread empty. Trips to the bottom, two up top. We send the blitz and Maddox slows him down. And it is Jones who will get the sack. Unfortunately, he did not get that at the last game of last episode, which would have been a dev boost for him. But we do reach the end of the first quarter, three to zero. But of course, Steelers looking to change that rather quickly. Now at the 16, they've lost yards the last two plays. They stay spread empty. Kyler Murray rolling, avoiding the pass rush and trying to buy time, but eventually he will just throw it away. So defense stands tall and it will bring out the field goal unit here for the Steelers, trying to tie this game up early in the second quarter. Snap back, hold down, kick is through. But just a short while later, following a fumble, turnovers have been a problem. Steelers have an opportunity once again to try to take a lead as they go to Kyron Williams. He'll pick up three. Four rushes, seven yards so far. We're doing pretty well against him on the ground. And now spread two to either side, including their tight end down to the bottom. Though they go Kyron Williams. Here comes Maddox. Good stop. Just a gain of one. Maddox, of course, the highest overall of our cornerbacks. Playing that slot, a little bit of some outside corner. He moves around. Third and six. Will be a drop back. We get some pressure, though, and throws off the throw. Too short for J.J. And it's fourth and six. Will be another field goal opportunity here for him, though they go with a the fake. They toss it out to the kicker, Verity, who will not get back even to the line of scrimmage. Gotta appreciate the effort though. We jump forward yet again here late in the second quarter. 45 seconds left before halftime. Trying to keep this game tied though is Kyler. He finds space down the middle. We had pass rush coming around the backside. Great play from the scrambler. Gets their opportunity going here. They have one timeout remaining, 15 seconds in counting. Though not in any rush to snap the ball here. Kyler. Clean pocket, though, as I say that, picked up, slammed down. It is Jones back again. That's now two big plays for him in the backfield in this one. Again, wish we had it last time. But it pushes them back. Field goal attempt from the 46. And he pushed it wide. That will keep things close here. Well into the second half now, and I'm pretty sure Madden glitched out. So we're watching this game from here on out. It's been all defense for us watching today, and that's a pretty good reason why. They keep finding those big plays, though we're standing tall when we get backed up against our own end zone. Offense, they have not done much of anything. But the Steelers down to the 11 here. Kyler Murray throws to Kyron Williams, who gets a catch gain of eight. If we're to find ourselves keeping this game a tie. It's gonna have to be a forced turnover here. Second and two goal line set play action throwing and there's the pick. It is Smith in the end zone. Talked about how we have an older, lower overall guy, but he made the play there for us. And since Madden has decided we can't exit this mode, why not? Let's jump into this next drive. As we hand it off, Connor Williams down the middle, picks up four, 11 rushes for him, 42 yards. Quick math, assuming at least it's around a 3.8 yards per carry. We then change up a look to spread either side. Pickett has it is open, target and Boyd who cannot squeeze it. Ends up being a great play on the receiver there by the corner. Knocks it out third and six. Need to get a first down here. Pickett looks to scramble. He will pick up the first down sliding down. No fake slide that time. But that's kind of been the run of our offense so far. We get, you know, a couple on first and second, and that third down we struggle to pick up today. First and ten, we throw. Complete for a couple. I believe that was Boyd. Stat sheet says two catches for him, including that one. Second and five as we're closing into the end here of the third quarter. Pickett going up top once again back to Boyd. One of the few players on offense higher than an 80 or at least an 80 overall. First and 10, looking to throw again. Back up top, jump ball, and Pickett couldn't find it after the tip. Though if he did, 
Would have been one heck of a highlight there for us. Could have been a touchdown. Instead, bunched down at the bottom, one up top. Second and ten, we handed off Connor down the middle. Slips through the first defender, but not a big gain. Just three. And that leaves us with a third and seven as time is ticking off here for the third. Do we snap the ball? No. We will head to the fourth quarter with a third and seven awaiting us. Now, even getting to field goal range would be a breakthrough for the offense today. We start spread empty here. Pick it, pass rush, evades, throwing down field, and he had Watson, but the ball just a little bit short. And that leaves us once again really needing our defense to come through. We are still level at three, under seven minutes left in the game. Kyler Murray has an open receiver who will pick up about six. Will actually be the first completion to Justin Jefferson today. So the defense, I mean, clearly by the points, you tell they are playing a really good game. Good run stop there. Nine rushes for Kyron Williams, only 16 yards. Defense by far is playing a winning game. You could say the same for the Steelers defense. As third and three, they hand it off. Cut back lane, a great block from their star dev lineman. And Okonkwo shaken up on the play. He'll have to head off the field first and 10 though for his teammates. Kyler Murray looking to rumble, though Ioannidis picks up the sack. Will be a loss of two for second and 12. If we could keep racking up plays like that, we should be in a pretty good spot. But a lot of patience there from Williams. He finds some space. Will pick up six, though he takes a pop shot late. And he's a little bit slow to get up. Another player for the Steelers heading off the field. So now they've lost a couple players this drive. Third and six, trying to continue the drive. We do get a little bit of some pass rushing. Not going to get away from Aaron Donald. His second sack today drops him at the 31. And once again, we see a field goal unit heading out here. This kick from the 38, last time he missed. This time, it's down the middle. This really has been a true battle for bottom of the division. 6-2-3, we head out starting at the 23. Making a couple changes here in the pistol set. Pick it, we'll look to throw. They bring the blitz, we get it out up top and it's a short gain of two. Now we're gonna need a whole lot more than just two yards here. We spread empty to follow. Pick it. Across the middle, open target is Brenton Strange. He had a fantastic opening episode last episode. Really hoping that he takes off as a rookie and becomes one of the key parts of our offense. We've had plenty of tight ends play well, and he kind of reminds me of Jeremy Ruckert from the Ohio Only Challenge. A low overall to start, but he made some plays and was an integral part of that team. Again, fingers crossed. That's the case here as we have second and six. Will be a pistol set. Looking to throw Pickett across the middle, going back to Strange and another first down. 10 of 16 is Pickett, 112 yards. Gonna need him to help lead us to the end zone here for the winner, at least a field goal to send it to overtime. Though pass rush, getting back there, he throws it away just in time. Obviously, we were looking at the beginning to maybe make an upgrade for the offensive line. We're also missing Brian O'Neill, the best player, I think, on this offense in terms of overall. As there's an open player, Connor, all the way down to the 17. His career has kind of been a little all over the place. When he first came in through college, fantastic first, what, one or two years. Hasn't quite seen him as much of late, but he's got some space and dips out at the two. Potentially a career decision there, not taking the contact. That should have been a touchdown. First and goal instead. Biggs versus Biggs, and he will walk in. We open up a lane for him, and finally we get the touchdown, taking the lead inside two minutes left. But once again, it's up to the defense, a touchdown game. Field goal does them nothing. As they're setting up the throw, Aaron Donald with the third. Just for him today. We've had six sacks in total. Gotta love when the defense shows up like this. We've got some good pass rushers. Need to see that consistently. 
Second and 16, lofting downfield and overthrowing Drake London. And he honestly had the step on Aruwarie. Very lucky for us. Third and 16, two spread either side. They set up the halfback screen and it's off the top of Jones' helmet. Fourth and 16, do they go for it? They will. With the game on the line at the 21, they need around the 37. And they've got a receiver who holds on to it. None other than Justin Jefferson, the late game drama himself. First and 10 up to the 47. Looking to throw back up top. Toe tapping to the 35. That might be Nikhil Harry. Interesting guy to jump into this mix here. First and 10. Pittsburgh starting to move. Pass rush shows up, but it's a dot to London. Another first down. All timeouts remain as it looks like the Steelers call one. Trying to make sure they have their best players out on the field with plenty of breath in them. 46 seconds left at the 23. Kyler Murray, he's stepping up, looking to run, and he takes the contact. Second timeout called. They have one last remaining. They need the touchdown. Looking to throw across the middle, and they find Jefferson. Strong hands to hold on to that one despite the hit. But they do not call that last timeout. Clock is moving. Kyler Murray, lofting, picked off. That should be game. As we might be adding on some points here, shaking off Kyler, though not going to get away from the big boy in Werfs. But that is a dub against bottom Steelers. And overall, very fitting that it was the defense that officially won that game as they kept us in it throughout offense. We need more, but we'll take the 10 to 6 dub to get us started. Now, following that two game win streak, it would abruptly end a close game against the Titans, a not so close game against the Lions, back to a close game against the Cardinals, and then we pulled off the close win against the Seahawks. So three of these last four games were winnable. Obviously the Lions quite not so. Now the reason that we jumped ahead here is because it is quite obvious right now with us only having three wins through the first half of the season, we're most likely not making the playoffs unless we win out. So we're going to start jumping ahead, but we have a nice combination here of other rivalry games. Browns, who I believe are actually atop the division, and the Bengals. So we'll jump into a little bit of those games, jump ahead a little bit more, and just find which one of these games here later on we want to jump into. Now, I say we're not making the playoffs, but that can kind of swing a little bit. The division is not great. We are three games down on the Browns, who indeed are actually atop of the division right now. But if we could pull off a win here as we're into the third quarter, it's 7-6. It's a close game. We had a touchdown in the first half. We gave up two field goals. If we could get a win here, pull off another win against the Bengals, who knows what could happen as Donald times up that hit perfectly. Just enough so to throw off the timing. Kirk Cousins, the quarterback here for the Browns, saw them a little bit last episode as he needs to get just one yard here. No pass rush. He's got all the time. This happened last episode too. He finally launches it. And that technically should be intentional grounding. He was well in the pocket, no receiver in the area, but I guess Kirko gets a pass. So instead it's a field goal for the Browns that gives them the lead. And in fact, as we were moving along here, let's widen that. Touchdown Tyler Lockett, 47 yards. They now take a solid advantage over us. Three minutes left here in the third. So with that being the case, let's jump out here on offense, see if we could put together a good drive here. We start in empty. Pickett looking to throw or rolling into the pass rush of Benton. Honestly, he did not need to move. He could have stepped up. That would have been fine. Bad pocket awareness. We stay spread. Second and 18. That time he steps up, throwing the ball complete to 83. Tyler Boy. That is a great way of answering back from the sack. First and 10 now up at the 31. We got a little bit of some breathing room. 
Kenny Pickett looking to throw again. Rolling, delivering a ball, and caught. I believe that is K.J. Hamler. That will be his fourth catch, 32 yards. He's getting the start today at slot over Watson. We're playing around with the receivers just to see if we could spark a little bit more offense. We know we have a couple good guys out there, but those good guys, they're getting covered by two or three defenders. Third and three, we need some other guys to step up as we go back to Hamler. They do give us forward progress there. First down. Now, Hamler should also provide a little bit more athleticism at that position. We'll see if we utilize it. Second and 10, still throwing. Quick throw, caught by Brenton Strange. Four catches for him in this one, 47 yards, but we're gonna need six more here for a first down as time is ticking off the clock. And we'll let the fourth quarter arrive. We are down by nine. Need a touchdown drive to get us going here. And if we could do it in a quicker fashion too, I'd appreciate it because we still need that stop from the defense. Got a tight pistol look here. Quick pass rush. Not sure what happened up top, but Smith ended up on the ground. And with that, so did Kenny Pickett. So third and 11 instead as we got two spread to either side. Looking to throw the ball halfback screen. We got some blockers in front, though outrunning the blocks. Fourth and five at the 46. With the time left in this game, we need to go for it here. We got a couple different options, some short, some downfield, all going in different directions as we can check this down for Connor, though he can't hold on to it. Big hit from 45, jars it free. And unless the defense can get one of those big turnovers for us, we're about out of this one. Under five minutes left, still down by nine. They're inside the red zone and dropped intended for number 81 in Smith. In the last episode against the Browns, Smith dropped a couple passes. So let's just keep going his way then. Second and 10, some play action for Kirko. We drop back into coverage. Blocking is working out great until Ioannidis gets back there. Receiver in the area this time. But a sack fumble on Kirko would be fun. At least for me, third and 10 at the 15 here. They go with a handoff, open space, and Jones nearly picks up the first down, fourth and two. But right now, the Browns going for the kill. If they get the first down, a touchdown really starts to put this one away. We could handle a field goal. Throwing, tipped up, and apparently we didn't want to pick it off. Would have been better field position, but we'll take it at the seven. But as time is very important right now, we're going to jump in this drive and look at this Browns defensive line. So they got a superstar interior right and the X Factor over on that right hand side. Just a really good group. We had Brenton Strange throw that a little bit flat, but still closer to the tight end. We got a big play. Instead, Kenny Pickett threw it to an invisible guy and wasn't anywhere close. Second and 10. Need to pick up a first down here. He slings it. That's a good throw for Strange with some blocks out in front. Can he go the distance? Gilman in pursuit will get him down at the 21. One heck of a play though for us and we're right back to it. Trying to capitalize off of it as the tight end nearly took it all the way. We got another guy, Hamler. That ball not close, but there was some contact made and we're gonna get a DPI call. Definitely not one that I really agree with. If anything, Hamler ran into him, but hey, I will take it. As we'll hand this one off, Connor rolls over the defender and in. We draw it back with a touchdown down the gut, make it 16-14. Once again, we have to call on the defense to make the plays. We are down two with 3.03 on the clock. Browns, RPO, they get it to the outside. Quick tackle gain of two goes to Elijah Moore. Honestly, I like the play call there. Those second and eight going spread empty, that I don't agree with. Trips up top, two down to the bottom. Can Kirko make the plays for the Browns? As we just send four, he's loading up deep downfield and puts it on him. A heck of a throw, I believe, to Rashad Bateman. I know we played against him last episode. I believe it was with the Browns. First and 10 for him as they go to Jones. Now inside the two minute mark, we call our first timeout. We could give up a field goal though, I prefer not to. 
Back to Jones down the gut, and he pushes forward, making it third and three. Ace formation, one timeout remains. As they go back to Jones, stood up by the rookie. It will be the field goal attempt. This will make it a touchdown game with no timeouts. And that's what we're going to have. In front of the home fans, can the offense bring it back here? We are down five. Need that touchdown again. No timeouts for us. Got to play towards the sideline. Or also just make sure we get some yardage as Pickett will get six. So that's going to run a good bit of clock. Need to get back to the line quickly here. Though we do make a switch, we send Strange to the right. Hamler to the left. Connor also switches. A little bit of some play action as we had Hamler. Steelers fans, you're probably very aware of what just happened there. Kenny Pickett, awful throw with a wide open receiver and that will ensure the loss to the Browns. Doesn't mean the season's over, you never know, something crazy could happen, but we're gonna need that craziness to start happening now. But this game, this one could be the deciding factor of our season and we are down big. Early movement though on the play, who did it? Well, it would be Patrick Jones, so that doesn't help us out. Already down two touchdowns, now inside the red zone are the Bengals. If we lose this one, and if the Browns also win this week, we would go down five games on them with about seven games left. And typically those odds, not so much in your favor, so we're gonna need some big plays here from our defense. At the 13, movement again. Who are they gonna call it on? Well, this time is on the offense, so a little bit of some give and take then. Second and five of the 18 now will be a throw pass rush. Donald will hit home, knocking down Deshaun Watson. So third and 11 at the 24. They look to throw quick pass and first down. I believe that is Kittle. We had the chance to force the field goal. Now, touchdown still an option for him. First and 10 at the 11. Watson dropping back, dumping off, and caught. Another number seven, so maybe it was the other Ohio team? No, that one, Juju Smith-Schuster. All right, so yeah, I'm pretty sure Bateman was the previous seven we faced on the Browns. Second and six, they got a tight look here. Going with the run and blown up, slamming down. White is Donald. With the course of how this season's going, I really hope he comes back for our next season and we could try to load up around him a bit more. Third and nine, comeback throw is shy of the first. They say fourth and one at the one. Chase nearly got the touchdown there, but they aren't done. They're looking for the dagger here. Fourth and one, offense stays out there. White down the middle, puts them up by three. The offense is not done fighting. 35 to 14 in the fourth quarter, seven minutes left. They're trying to at least take something into next game. As they hand it off, Connor down the middle, he will pick up about five. 13 rushes, 63 yards for him, but we need to get the ball downfield a little bit more. Pretty even, 21 rushing to 19 passing. And Connor will pick up the first down, make it first and goal at the seven. But considering we are down those three scores, we need a touchdown as soon as possible. Hard count, no one jumps this time. It's a read option. There goes Pickett down to about the one, one and a half. For a second, I thought he might have had him there. Instead, goal line set here. Boyd stretched down to the bottom as we go with a run. Connor stood up and losing a yard. We don't have the best of offensive lines, so you never quite know with these goal line sets. We go back to it, and the second time is the charm for Connor. We punch one back. Now we need a quick stop from the defense. But that would not seem to be the case. Bengals all the way down to the 23 here, thrown away fourth and five. They tack on some more points. Two minutes left. We did get a quick score there. It was a 100-yard touchdown. Kick six from Miles Sanders. You could see it as the third one listed. All right, 10-point game, 2.06 left. 
Once again, needing a stop here from the defense. We start with a loss of two. That always helps. Third and ten, a sack from Dennis. Well, we've got a little bit of time left to make something crazy happen. But can Pickett deliver? We had the opportunity last game to find the win. He threw it away, quite literally. Can he make the throw this time? Downfield, it's up for Robbie. Chosen and... It's a 50-50 ball, though. The odds were not in our favor. But at least the accuracy of it, not too bad. Second and 10. We got two to the right, one to the left. And have Strange go out on that tight end wheel. Does not quite open up for us and intended for Connor. Not enough time to throw it. And it definitely hasn't been a good game from Pickett. Two touchdowns, two interceptions. Need a first down here. We got two plays to find it. As Pickett just looks to run. Ball pops out, we jump on it. So still a little bit of hope, but we do not have a whole lot of time here. Making some adjustments at the line. End up moving Connor over to the right-hand side. Fourth and three. We got to find Boyd, and he holds on to it. We're still moving here. Down 10 points. Under a minute left. They have one high safety. See if we can get Hamler's speed downfield. They end up switching off. Pickett takes some hits. He gains nine. Back to the line quickly. Got to do whatever we can with what we have. And move the safeties back. Just got to send people downfield. Look for the or opportune throw. And that opportune throw was nearly picked. Well, maybe one positive to take from that. Both sides get a little bit of a breather. Third and one. We keep all of our main guys out here. A little bit of some play action. Tyler Boyd lead him. And that's going to be another pick to seal the game. Harrison Jr., he's looking for points, but he won't get it. He does secure the win, though. That one pretty much ensures that we are not making it to the playoffs. Now it's all about seeding and whatnot, so let's jump to later on in the season. I'm thinking week 17 is 18 is the Steelers. We already watched them, so let's round this one out. And indeed, we are jumping into week 17. We did tack on one more win. The rest of the games to get us here were all losses. We'll go over the full recap after this game, but we're looking for a little bit of some fun to round out this first season. Now, the Miami Dolphins have driven down the field mostly with their running back in David Montgomery. He's been their primary guy this drive. They go back to him, and he's just outrunning the first two levels of our defense. That has also been through the air as well. Now they bring out the fullback here for first and 10. Looking to go back to Montgomery or some play action. No, they do go with a toss. Getting towards the top. Great blocking down field. And we eventually chase him down after the gain of eight. With five carries already averaging five yards per carry. Has him down to the six as they go back to him. And no gain. Aaron Donald gets the stop in. Again, hopefully... He sticks around for at least one more season, and hopefully we can add a few more guys around him, but the Dolphins diving in will get the touchdown, Tyreek Hill. Now the defense would actually go and do a pretty good job the rest of that first half, only giving up one more touchdown, though. We have 38 seconds left before halftime, trying to find something here before this quarter comes to an end, but that's kind of what we've seen from the offense in this one. Moving into our next season, 100% the offense is going to be the primary focus of the offseason, making sure that we could make some plays. Now, unfortunately, Kenny Pickett, really the only or highest overall, at least, quarterback option for us. So we've got to put some talent around him. As we thread that one in for Brenton Strange, we'll call our first time out there. Of our current group, I'm thinking Strange, maybe Boyd and Connor. Those are going to be the main focuses for us in how we build this team. As we got Strange again, he's going to get the first down and out of bounds to the opposite 35. That does, however, mean we still need to sort out wide receiver two, three. Maybe Boyd is even more so of a slot guy than we were originally hoping. He would be able to make that move as Hamler drops it off the tip. Really thought we were about to get ourselves a touchdown there. But we're going to change up the original look here on second and ten. Send the trip set to the right-hand side. That's going to put Watson towards that right pylon. Strange lone to the left-hand side. 
though they were kind of doubling him, but we get the advantage diving catch. Second timeout call. So far, he is the dude as we have him and Boyd kind of switching here across the middle. See if we could get one of them open. Well, there's Boyd making the adjustment on the throw. We've got a touchdown here in the first half. That would seem to spark the offense as we get through halftime midway here through the third quarter. Offense driving again, trying to equalize this game. We hand it off to Connor. 12 carries for him, 40 yards. Now, we'll talk a whole lot about the draft and everything next episode, but there is a running back in that draft that we might be adding. Again, we'll take a look at all of that. It's a pretty light draft class for us. In terms of draftable players projected, I believe there are four or five, three of which, actually all of them, are for the offense. Again, that side, we're trying to improve the most, nearly picking up the first down there on third. And I think our defense, with Donald sticking around, adding a couple pieces, that could be a really solid group. But we're looking for a first down here. As we're going full back dive, that's easily going to be the first down. As he breaks through, tying this game up. What a full back dive. Jason Cabina levels us up at 14. A great start to this second half, and we are not done jumping forward we're now into the fourth early in the fourth 14 14 defense has played well today we got boyd wide open down to the 24. we're seeing glimpses of what this team can do offensively just need to build around those key pieces for sure strange one of my favorite players for us so far as we go to the other tight end that is jesse james with the first down Great play for him, though not sure if he's going to be around next season. Or Gresham might hit pretty hard. He's already just a 66. First and 10, though. We go Connor with some space up top. He will rush into the end zone, fighting through Williams and taking the lead. We said we were looking for some fun, and that we have. Dolphins down at the 27, following a fumble on our punt return. They loft it and nearly find the end zone. Cooper Rush in at quarterback. Looks like perhaps there was an injury because Lawrence started the game for him. Did not see that pop up as any sort of update as we've been quickly jumping through. Rush rolling, throwing, and missing Hill. His second straight miss. He started 0 of 4. And perhaps this is the reason why we've been able to storm back here. Third and 10. They bring out all of their tight ends. They hand it off down the middle. It opens up. There goes Montgomery. First down. Man, we held them first and second with luck of bad throws. But give it all up there on third. They're down to the 12 as we're about five minutes left in this game. Keeping with the heavy look. Movement. We definitely saw Donald move, but did someone else draw him off? Yes, they did. So we'll make it first and 15 instead back at the 17 as they go to shotgun to spread either side. Cooper Rush hands it off. Montgomery looking for a cutback lane, though there is none. Great stop from Pinnock, who's kind of played a little bit of a safety linebacker hybrid for us. Toss, Montgomery trying to get to the outside. A great cut gets by 21 in Williams. But we recover third and four. Obviously, we prefer to just give up a field goal here. Turnover would be great as Rush looks to throw. Going up top and throwing it at the line of scrimmage. Nowhere to go. It's at least a completion for him. But that will be not a field goal attempt here. With four minutes left, offense staying on out here for the Dolphins. They're looking for the tie. Rush throwing and picked off in the back of the end zone. We take a knee. Aruarie gives us a chance to run some clock. Let's try to do just that. First and 10 at the 20. Try to follow behind some blocks. Connor looked to bounce it late. And he's actually a little bit shaken up after the play. The hit didn't look all too serious, but maybe he tweaked an ankle. He heads to the sideline. That's going to bring out a name that I'm going to struggle with, so I'm not even going to try. As we go with the read option, there goes Pickett down the middle, sliding with the first down gain. Gotta love those random RPO read options. 
But following it, we will get Connor back out there. It's actually a peck strain, so we'll be a little bit cautious with him, but we do need him to finish this game strong as clock is running. And in fact, so are we. That's the game plan here, this drive. As we're about to tick under two and a half minutes, we have second and 10. Going back to Connor, getting blocked to the second level, trying to get past 55, we do not, but brings up a third and two. Well, that will, of course, be for after the two minute warning. Dolphins, if they're to have a chance here late, they need the stop. But we're gonna follow behind our best blocker, right hand side in Brian O'Neill. That will be a first down as well behind strange timeouts being called. With under two minutes remaining, we're just going to keep on at it. Connor Williams with a little space. That's another first down game. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Continue the ground and pound as we go with a stretch to the outside. Good stiff arm, and Connor will pick up two. Final timeout call. With a minute 47 left on the clock, first down seals it. We motion over the fullback, get a decent pull there from 70. We'll make it third and five. At the minimum, though, we're in field goal range, which would make things very difficult for the Dolphins with no timeouts. We go with the counter. Good pull. Kind of takes away space. We'll let this clock roll and we'll send out the field goal unit. But to put this one to bed, Rylan heads on out. And he slipped on the kick. That came up nowhere close. So why not? A little bit more drama here late. 19 seconds left. A touchdown down. No timeouts. Cooper Rush at quarterback. He throws out of bounds. No receiver in the area. Should have been intentional grounding. For some reason, we haven't gotten any of those calls throughout the episode today. 14 seconds left. They got a bunch up top, tight end down to the bottom. Cooper Rush with a four-man rush. Lofts it out of bounds. That time at least a receiver in the area. A one of eight on throws. He's throwing any chance he has to really be this Dolphins team's future. For sure. Third and ten unless he can make something crazy happen here. Going back up top and for the third straight play. Out of bounds. I don't know about you. This is seeming like some Madden shenanigans so let's protect the end zone here as time will expire on this play loading up deep and it will hit the turf i've seen cooper rush do some crazier things but we will finish this season one with a win at least in the watch portion now let's go round it all up and to top it all off we officially end the season with that actual dub a sweep of the Steelers this season. Now, we came very streakly in this season. Some highlights for sure. We started with a three game losing streak. We then won two, we then lost three, we then won one, then we lost, lost another three. Won one, lost two, won two. Very streaky, but at times, you could definitely tell where this team can find their success. And defense, I think, is first and foremost. Now, one quick thing I want to check of these losses, which we had plenty, how many were one score? Well, obviously, Jaguars, not so much. Chargers, one score. Not with the Bengals, 10 point. Browns are one score. Cardinals, one score. Not the Lions. Titans were one score. Not quite with the Colts or Bengals. Texans were. So five possible other wins if just one or two more plays went our way, which would have put us at, I think, either 10 or 11 wins. And indeed, it would have been 11 wins. So it would have just switched our win-loss total. But at least we were not the worst team this year. The sweep against the Steelers comes in clutch. Now, we still were four games out of top with the Browns, and I'm not sure we beat the Browns this last year. We had some good games against them, the Bengals, our best games against the Steelers. Overall, this team is close, but we said that a lot with the Kentiana State Only Challenge. But a good indicator of where we are is checking the stats. 23rd offense, defense 11th. I would say that is pretty fitting. 
One thing in total I do want to check here is how many turnovers we had. And we were not the worst in turnover differential. It was the Vikings, fortunately. We were the second worst, 10. So we gave away 22. We had 16 interceptions. We lost six fumbles. We had 12 takeaways. Overall, I think there was a bit of work we could do there, and that's probably going to come down to Kenny Pickett. And with 16 interceptions, take a look at the rushing, because I know he fumbled three. So combine those. He alone had 19 of our turnovers. Not too good. He did throw for over 3,500 yards. So there's that 23 touchdown, 62% completion. He was sacked 28 times. That's close-ish, close enough to at least two per game. Now, how did this look compared to his real life rookie season? Well, he obviously didn't play all of it, but it's a better ratio. So there's at least some improvement here. Rushing the ball, James Conner comes up 21 yards shy of a thousand, probably because Pickett took some of those. He had 90 carries. Big difference though between Connor and Sanders, and then Israel really didn't get much of any opportunity. But he did get a touchdown. Connor had six, Pickett had three, Sanders had four. Two fumbles though for Connor, not great. Receiving wise, Tyler Boyd. He actually had a pretty productive year. 969 yards, could use a little bit more, six touchdowns. But Bretton Strange, he ended with 910 yards. I doubt he's going to be rookie of the year because tight ends don't get love, but that is arguably rookie of the year candidate right there. We'll check that at the beginning of next episode. Outside of those two, it's really a toss up for who else we're going to have. With similar playing time, it looks like Hamler slightly more productive than Watson, but we'll take a good look at all receiver options going into next season. Blocking wise, Donovan Smith was our weakest link and he is going to be about 31, maybe a little bit older moving into next year. If we could find a replacement, that would be great. Defensively, Maddox, the slot corner, semi outside corner, led us in tackles 93. The rookie in Dennis 88, closely behind. How about tackles for a loss? We had 20 from Aaron Donald. Quick look over at the sacks. Can't see had 11 as well as Patrick Jones. The outside linebackers, they played very similarly, though Cansey just got a little bit more involved in the regular tackles. But the sacks, it was all Aaron Donald, 19. Cansey was second with four, three and a half from Dennis, three for Jones, two and a half for Ioannidis, Jefferson had two, and Brandon Smith, who I think at the beginning of the episode I called one of the older guys. I forgot that I put him in the start over the older guy. So he's actually on the younger side, still that 66 overall. He did make some plays this year. Our leading interception guy was both Dennis and Avante Maddox. Two for Williams and then one for a handful of players. Now, did we force any fumbles? Two, Smith and Donald. Of those two, we did not recover a single one. So that's great. How about block kicks? We did have two, Weaver and Cross. All right, safeties, none. Defensive touchdowns, none. Kicking wise, the extra points were good for Ryland. The field goals, not all so much. He missed five of his 18. But we at least now know the base of this roster and where we need to focus on making some upgrades. I think it's gotta be the offense. Defense, that could very much change depending on if Aaron Donald decides to hang up the cleats or how regression hits some of those groups. We did see some progression from a lot of young guys, relied on a lot of young guys. Defense played above their overalls. Offense played either at or slightly below. So that's gonna be the focus next time. Do not miss it as we'll go through the full off season and get into some game action for season two next time. So hit that bear icon or scroll down, hit the sub button and definitely tap the bell icon so you're notified of when these videos go live. This series every single Tuesday and Thursday. We also have the Panthers traditional franchise every single Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So we'll see you guys over there as we head to the off season next. Now it's